Hey, what's going on guys? So I have seen a lot of people showing the strategy how to do the Ravage Blighted maps with stunning and chilling towers to make them very very easy but I haven't really seen anyone showing how much rewards do you get from them and are they profitable so I decided to do my own test so what I did is I bought 50 Blight Ravaged Blighted maps and I don't believe tier matters, is it tier 14, 15, 16, because map says it's monster level 85 anyway, so I don't believe the tier matters. And I also didn't want to do the, uh, like the easy strategy, so just doing them white with clear sepia and amber oils to make them easy. I wanted to go for maximum profit. So what I did is I used four chisels on them, mm, alchemy, and then I was uh, rolling for very easy mod mods. So I would reroll like an extra life, mm, minus max resist for me. Like this map is pretty good because I am immune to curses and boss life usually doesn't matter that much, but I would reroll reflect, cannot regen. And the hardest mods are the monster's uh, action speed cannot be slowed below, below zero because that basically means your stunning chilling towers are not gonna work. Also the next one that is really very bad is monsters cannot be stunned, obviously again for the stunning towers. And the third one, monsters have increased movement speed. It is not as bad, but you still would probably not want to have that one. And obviously you reroll the mods that you can't do or you just don't want to do yourself like extra life on the monsters and so on so this one would be pre uh, pretty nice and i would use the oils so you can use nine oils so i would use three black for uh, chest to have a chance for additional reward three crimson for uh, 10 lucky chests and three violet for uh, lanes to have additional chance to have additional uh, reward chest also in case you don't want don't know the awakening awakening bonus also works on blighted maps so instead of 30 uh, lucky chests from crimson oil you get i believe like 38 something like that so yeah these were the oils i was using and also on top of that i was using for sacrifice fragment for even more quantity Okay, so that's basically the strategy how I was running them, but uh, now let me show you uh, the strategy behind like actually doing them. So here is the map that I did. So again, it is a rare one with uh, nine oils. So this is the strategy with stunning and uh, chilling tower so basically what you want to do is you want to just stun everything uh, to not let them move and if you have like stun immune monsters like i do have here you also want to build the chilling towers to slow them down and also you want to build the empowering tower to empower your stunning towers so here i did uh, by one empowering two stunning and here i have chilling and i'm gonna also i put one chilling here so this side is basically secured for now but also it doesn't guarantee you that all of the monsters are just gonna be stuck there because some monsters just randomly can have unwavering mod which means they are basically immune to all uh, slowing stunning effects and also i do believe you still can just get a monster that are res resistant to certain towers just randomly I don't know how exactly it works, but I do believe certain just monster types, doesn't matter from which type of portal they spawn, they still have uh, some immunities to certain towers. So here I am building the second setup on the second side. So uh, again, empowering, stunning and chilling. So here I'm gonna skip a little bit, there's nothing really happening. And now the first boss is coming and he is actually stun immune. Well, not stun immune, he is, it says is he's resilient to physical tower, which basically means he cannot be stunned from the tower. So I am actually focusing my 
DPS on him. But then I notice the bottom side is leaking, so I'm going to going back and then I'm killing the boss. So he is now chilled thanks to the chilling tower, so he's moving slower. And here I do have a uh, Roas which are resurrected. So this is also the dangerous monster type. So I now I know that this lane is gonna spawn them and they are basically resurrecting I believe two times. So again, just building more slowing towers. I'm gonna now skip even more. And here, are you, as you can see, some monsters are leaking. So I'm building another chilling tower here. And here, even though I do have stunning towers, I do have a chilling, uh, some monsters are still just going through. Just random single monsters from time to time. And I, when I was doing the test of 50 uh, Ravage Blight Knobs, I actually did fail few of them and most of the fails were simply because of this kind of RNG like some single monsters just uh, going through or there's like a one lane that doesn't have like any towers to build and so on sometimes also I just was getting really unlucky where I would just go to one side and the second side suddenly just spawn a lot of super fast monsters and I didn't expect that and they would just all of them would go through to the pump also as you can see if you are doing this strategy the map becomes super super laggy because well a lot of monsters like you can see here this boss and these monsters are basically stuck here same for this one and top right one so all of them are getting stuck so there's a lot of monsters on the map and it just lags a lot so at some point I am trying to focus the large, like, large clusters of monsters so I can reduce the lag a bit. So now the map is done but I still need to clear. So I am standing around the middle for a while just to not let a few random monsters again just go through. And then I'm just gonna start clearing the bosses. So here I'm just killing them and in case you are wondering what build I am playing uh, you can watch my previous video uh, where I am showcasing my wonder build which is not probably the best build for this but it's doing a good job it has a pretty good single target and also can clear most of the monsters like easily and I guess I should also show you a sm small preview of like a loot that I'm getting from the chests uh, so let's skip to like here you're gonna see like a currency chest and oil chest so from what I noticed when I was doing a lot of them and then I was doing like tier 14 blighted maps I would say you get like half of the loot in tier 14 maps it's not really like noticeable when you are doing them but uh, very often like in one stack of stack decks for example in ravaged maps I would get six stack decks and in tier 14 normal blighted mouse i would get like three so yeah and also like just the amount of currency you get is uh, much higher in ravage blighted maps okay so now that's just the strategy how was i was doing them uh, oh and by the way the uh, enchants i was using one empowering tower for increased effect and one seismic tower for increased range you probably can go for some different combos but yeah, that's what I decided to go for. So now let's look at the profit. So this is all of the currency that I got from the 50 uh, Ravage Blighted maps. And this is all of the oils. I do believe for some reason I didn't have indigo oils on my filter, but it shouldn't really matter too much. Uh, the most important ones are like a crimson and above. So I got 8 golden, 15 silver. 20 opalescent, like 40 black, and quite a lot of other ones. And here are some other like, like random rewards, fossils, scarabs, and so on. Mm. And in terms of exalts, I got five exalted orbs. Also a lot of awakened sections, so they are very expensive and the same for stack decks. And here is the third tab, which is just maps, unique maps, contracts, some blueprints, and also the big thing about the Ravage Blighted maps is the basis because again the zone is item level 85 
which means it's gonna drop a lot of 85, 86 item level bases. So for example, here is bone helmet item level 87 and two tombus item level 87. And if you get the 100% percentile, so uh, what I mean by percentile is you look at the armor and evasion rating, for example, here, and this one has 141. So this is not 100%. If, if it had 145, this would be 100% and this would basically be much much more expensive. I believe I sold one of these boots with 100% percentile, item level 86, without any influence for two exalts. And this helmet, even without 100% uh, percentile, uh, because it is item level 86 bone helmet, still sells for I believe like 70c. So you can actually get quite a lot of uh, good bases from uh, rubbish blighted maps. I also dropped one Empower, one Enlighten, Reguard Quills, Maloney, so you know, obviously you're gonna get some rare drops. And as you can see here, I did not drop a single Strangle class, which is the unique amulet that you can drop from these maps. And here is the loot from 10 normal uh, tier 14 Blighted maps. Obviously it's only 10, so it's not gonna be that big, but as you can see, I got five Ravage Blighted maps. And that's a good, pretty big difference uh, from uh, Ravage Blighted maps to normal Blighted maps because you're, you are gonna drop these and in Ravage Blighted maps you can't drop Ravage Blighted maps. So uh, that's the good uh, side of them. So I wanted to test out which ones are better to run. And I also got uh, pretty unlucky because I didn't get a single uh, golden oil and I don't believe I got a single exalted up. Yeah. So now let's look at the actual spreadsheet with calculations. So I did do uh, 50 uh, Ravage Blighted maps. I was buying them for 20C. I was using uh, free black oils, free violet, free crimson, and this is the price I paid for them. Maybe there is a better combo for the oils. I believe this one is probably the best. Uh, so I paid this amount of money, I also was using chisels, I was re-rolling them, and I was using sacrifice fragments. And out of 50, I did fail 13. So that means I basically failed around 25% on of these maps. So this is a good and a bad thing. Obviously it's bad because I would prefer to uh, complete all of them. But at the same time, we're gonna see, are they actually profitable, even though you are failing some of the maps? So let's look at the actual profit. So revenue, so just overall uh, currency that I got from the Visa free tabs is around 6,000 chaos and that minus the initial investment, so minus 2,000 is 4,000 and in exalts right now that is 27 exalts. And I was farming them for seven hours, so I did get four exalts per hour, which to be honest is not that bad. Most of the top strategies give like between five to ten exalts per hour, so this is a little bit less. But the good thing about it is you don't really need to buy that many things, right? You're just buying uh, ravaged blighted maps, rolling them, you don't need any scarabs, quartz stones, and so on. So they are pretty just fast to prepare. Uh, selling the stuff is not gonna be that fast probably because there's a lot of random things but still that's pretty much any other uh, strategy and now let's look at how much I would make if I actually didn't fail any of them so if I did complete uh, so I did complete uh, 37 so if I only uh, if I only bought 37 of them, I would only use 111 oils. And let's not remove all of the uh, rerolls, because that's not that big of an investment. And time, I would probably spend, I would say, around one hour or less, because obviously when I was failing these maps, uh, they would not take that much time. So if I failed, let's say, after two minutes, uh, obviously it's not gonna take a full time. So I would say it's it would probably be like six hours to complete 37 Ravage Blighted maps. So that would uh, make the strategy uh, 5x per hour, which is actually, I would say pretty good. Uh, but for the strategy like this hard, like 
these maps are not like super easy if you are choosing them and you don't want to fail any of them you probably would need a pretty nice build for it to be able to complete all of them that's actually probably not that big of a profit but still they are very profitable uh, compared to like the low investment strategies right mm, now let's look at the normal tier 14 uh, blighted maps so i did 10 of them i paid 18c per one and here is all of the other investments so i paid like 300 chaos and i did complete them in a little bit more than one hour so i did put 1.2 hours here and i made 800c so minus investment mm, i did make 500c so i made a little bit more than three exalts so that's a little bit less than three exalts per hour and i did complete all of them so as you can see here uh, they are quite worse but obviously i think i was a little bit unlucky because again i didn't get any golden oils any exalted orbs but still i do believe ravage blighted maps are way 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 more profitable but obviously they are much harder and even if you're gonna fail 25 percent of them you are still gonna make a better profit so if i could do them i would probably go for ravaged maps but obviously the ravaged maps are uh, harder and you're gonna have to focus more a lot of people won't like to run a blighted map because they are like super chill you can just afk in the middle you can watch some movie or streams on your second monitor or something so that's not gonna happen when you are doing ravaged maps so if you are this type of player you probably should you probably should still stick with uh, like tier 14 plus lighted maps uh, but if you want to do something interesting because i actually would say these maps are very interesting and fun to run because you actually feel like you're, you're playing the uh, tower defense you have to focus on your uh, positioning with your towers you have to prioritize certain lanes when you are dealing damage sometimes you have to sacrifice like 10 life to let the boss go in so you can clear maybe like a different lane and so on so they are pretty fun to run but obviously not as chill and easy as the normal one but both of them are very profitable so that's gonna be it thanks for watching and see you in the next one